In normal times, being responsible for one multi-million pound mishap might be enough to end a ministerial career. But these are not normal times, and the fact that Chris Grayling managed to amass two hugely costly disasters in one day simply resulted in the customary backing of Downing Street. Our political correspondent, Michael Crick, reports. £33 million. Pounds, what it took ministers to settle a legal claim from the Channel Tunnel operator Eurotunnel. A claim that Chris Grayling and the Transport Department failed to include Eurotunnel in the process for awarding cross-channel freight contracts in the event of no deal. The latest episode in what's already become a fiasco, with the pulling out three weeks ago of one firm who were included and did get a contract, Seaborne Freight, the ferry firm which owned no ships. The country cannot afford Chris Grayling. He's got to go for the credibility of our nation. And my goodness me, the people who are working for him must be pulling their hair out. He stumbles from catastrophe to disaster, and it's just gross incompetence on an industrial scale. Chris Grayling, as after the Seaborne freight pullout three weeks ago, has been lying low, working all day inside the transport department, refusing requests for interviews, and perhaps hoping the story will simply fizzle out. It was left to his colleague, the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, to explain things. And to hear Mr Hancock speak, you might think this wasn't an embarrassing climb down, but an extraordinary breakthrough, a triumph for government negotiations. This is a really important agreement that uh, we've come to as a government as a whole. Uh, it's very important that whatever the Brexit scenario, we can have that unhindered supply of medicines. And I can't emphasise enough how important the agreement that we've reached today is, because it allows us to have confidence that we'll have that unhindered supply of medicines, which everybody wants to see. The risk was, the government say, that the judge in the Eurotunnel claim might next week have declared all the no-deal freight contracts invalid, endangering medicine so much ministers would have had to drop any thoughts of no deal. That in turn would weaken Britain's negotiating hand. And yet MPs look set to block no deal anyway, 12 days from now, which makes the 33 million look very expensive. So, one more for the growing list of Chris Grayling's ministerial failings. These include, at justice, his ban on prisoners receiving books, later overturned in court. His new court fees, said to have made innocent people plead guilty, later scrapped by Michael Gove. The £200 million Carillion deal for jails, which collapsed and was completely unsustainable, a prisons minister later said. Then a transport last spring's chaos over the new rail timetable. He'd not asked enough tough questions, Grayling confessed. And of course, seaborne freight. Chris Grayling seems to be overseeing projects that not only don't deliver, but also cost taxpayers dear. And I think he needs to look in the mirror and ask some long, hard questions about how he treats taxpayers' money. It's not other people's money, it's taxpayers' hard-earned money, and it's not being spent on things that it should be being spent on. Despite today's barrage of criticism and more, no doubt, in the Commons next week, Downing Street say Theresa May still has confidence in Chris Grayling and that he has a very important job to do. Well, arguably, uh, Eurotunnel isn't the biggest problem that Chris Grayling has had to face today. And that bigger than that, perhaps, is this report from the National Audit Office on the part privatisation of the probation service that was carried out under Chris Grayling's watch at the Ministry of Justice six or seven years ago. It's a pretty scathing document which says that the implementation of the reforms was rushed, introduced significant risks and was poor value for money and ended up costing almost £500 million uh, more than was originally uh, envisaged. Uh, and it says that uh, uh, more offenders actually ended up uh, going back to jail and, of course, uh, private contracts uh, had to be cancelled. So why hasn't Theresa May got rid of him? Well, I suspect that in normal times, if we didn't have Brexit, and perhaps under another Prime Minister, he would have been reshuffled out of the Cabinet uh, quite a while ago. But you've got to remember uh, that he and Theresa May are close allies dating back to Wimbledon Conservative politics in the 80s. 
He ran her leadership campaign. He's a strong Brexiter in the Cabinet, but loyal. He doesn't attack his colleagues publicly, doesn't cause her embarrassment, doesn't cause the government embarrassment, at least not on Brexit. And she's got to be aware of the delicate balance in the Cabinet between the forces. And, of course, if Chris Grayling was to lead the Cabinet, the risk would be he would be another Brexit rebel uh, in crucial Commons votes. Thanks, Michael. Well, just before we came on air, I spoke via the internet with Hugh Merriman, MP, a Conservative member of the Transport Select Committee. I began by asking if he shared the concern of others looking on. I do, actually. Uh, I think it's absolutely outrageous that a company has managed to get £33 million out of a £108 million tendered contract. So, effectively, make almost 33% you know, profit uh, by doing absolutely nothing apart from taking legal action. So I think their behaviour has been unethical and I don't think it looks very good for those that have let them get away with this either. Well, is it Eurotunnel who've disgraced themselves or the government? Well, I think Eurotunnel have because it's not as if they even run shipping operations now. They did in 2015. They've seen a legal loophole and decided to test it and they've done this off the back of the challenging Brexit problem that we have. So they've basically caused UK taxpayers to pay out money that they probably, you know, may but not they, be... they were in for. the right. That's the point. I mean, the reason this deal has had to be done is because they are legally in the right. I mean, surely this lands at the feet of Chris Grayling. It certainly lands at the feet of the Department for Transport, across government. But it's Chris uh, but Grayling who runs the right. department, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit much to blame civil servants here. I mean, surely you've got to blame the man at the top. I'm blaming the, I'm blaming the department. I mean, ultimately, it's the government that I, I'm an MP of. just doesn't look as if it's done its homework, and it looks as if... It's paid an awful lot of money out um, you know, for a tender failure. It doesn't, doesn't at all um, reflect us in a good light. I know that there's also certain monies given to it to make it resilient for Brexit, but they're a private organisation. They should pay for that themselves. Shouldn't, so, yeah, shouldn't ministers right. take responsibility? You know, there is such a thing as ministerial responsibility and honour in politics still, and people have to take responsibility. Well, those people who have been responsible for this need to come on and explain exactly what happened how they were responsible. It's not for me to turn around and start saying X, Y, Z should be fired or sacked or fall on their sword. Well, we're talking about Chris uh, Grayling, not X, Y, or Z. Well, that's okay. for those... That's, look, Chris will have to explain exactly what's happened and what he's going to do to remedy it and what he thinks uh, of, of his position as a result of that. I don't think this is at all a good action and no-one comes out of this at all well uh, and people need to reflect on it. I mean, I, I can certainly tell from the tone of your voice, but, I mean, you know, the point is out, out there people are saying... Everything Chris Grayling touches turns to whatever Something. the word is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can imagine the word that you're thinking of. Um, I mean, look, when we've had Chris in front of the select committee, we've looked at actions before where it involves franchises where he was not responsible for the award of it. So, you know, what we're touching on here is something that does seem to have occurred uh, under his um, his sort of executive position as Secretary of State, uh, which is why he will need to explain exactly why. Uh, the decision to be made to pay such a high amount out. In a way, isn't this another one of those sort of, you know, uh, consequences of the Brexit process we're in, that we just don't have the best people doing the best jobs in government? Well, I think what it actually does show, that we are in a position where we are hurtling towards a no-deal uh, Brexit, potentially, when we don't seem to have the preparedness in place uh, to be able to deliver it. And that causes me huge concern, which, I'm sorry to parrot the line, uh, if MPs would get behind a deal and actually sign up to it and compromise, then we wouldn't be in a position of needing extra resilience because we'd have an orderly exit from the EU. So, you know, we're being faced with economic damage on the one hand or political damage on the other if we don't deliver the Brexit result. So I think MPs are just as culpable for not signing up to this deal uh, as those that have made errors in this particular instance. So my frustration, if you like, is shared across uh, the House of Parliament. Hugh Merriman, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Eurotunnel wouldn't comment on the MP Hugh Merriman's allegations, but earlier the company said Eurotunnel has concluded an out-of-court agreement with the Secretary of State for Transport that will ensure that the Channel Tunnel remains the preferred route for vital goods to travel between the EU and the UK.